गुड आफ्टरनून डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेदांत रुद्राक्ष साक्षी आमन सो काइंडली कन्फर्म योर अटेंडेंस बाई सेंग यस टू मी जस्ट सॉर्ट ऑफ टेक्स्ट मी यस सो दैट आई अंडरस्टैंड दैट यू आर दे आर विथ मी वेदांत रुद्राक्ष Sakshi and Aman. Okay, thank you, thank you, Aman Rudraksh. Uh, left out is Sakshi and Vedant. Um, uh aman uh, sakshi thank you thank you sanuvar thank you so much okay so uh, we'll quickly start uh, okay so tell me one thing dear students uh, any one of you any one of you can respond to me uh, with the text uh, like at this time tomorrow are you free at 120 tomorrow are you free um, are you free at 120 tomorrow Uh, please uh, text me your response good afternoon sanuvar so dear students are you free at 120 tomorrow Oh, okay so uh it difficult it's become almost uh, stopped in the last class uh okay okay aman um, aman you you tell me like um, in my first lecture were you free uh, were you there in uh, when i took my first lecture did you listen or did you watch my first video on this lesson okay so uh, let me start from the from where i stopped in the last class okay so dear students you can see here um, you can see uh, you know like i told you evans tries an o level um, is a story of uh, you know evans james even uh, who is a, uh, you know convict by nature and he has been uh, imprisoned inside this jail and he wants to appear for o level examination okay o level examination so o level german examination so now he has been granted permission by the jail's authority in consultation with the board uh, you know he has been uh, permitted or given uh, permission by the uh, by the jail authority to to write his exam okay so he is writing his o level german examination uh, and all security arrangements have already Uh, put in place uh, have been put in place for him uh, now let's see uh, what happens whether he writes uh, you know fairly or he does something wrong okay uh, see the person who is invigilating in his room in his prison cell the person who is invigilating is supposed to be saint uh, maclery okay saint maclery from a nearby church but we we'll, we shall find out whether he is a real maclery or a duplicate maclery that we shall find out later on so a clergyman that is a church man from the nearby church has been appointed to give uh, to do invigilation for evans's o level german examination okay so you know, let's find out whether uh, evans writes uh, you know in a fair manner 
and all okay so before that uh, before that uh, you know there is a person called jackson prison uh, jackson and uh, stevens okay they are all prison authorities so they are taking care that that uh, they are making sure that uh, evans does not carry anything uh, suspicious with him or does not uh, keep anything uh, suspicious with him so that uh, he can attack the invigilator when there is nobody around okay therefore uh, Jackson and uh, Stephen have taken all the um, arrangements and they have checked also they have fixed the body the room of uh, Evans you know thoroughly so that Evans does not carry anything objectionable with him okay so uh, we'll start uh, from here now okay so Jackson uh, from uh, I think I should start from here okay so as you can see here at 8 40 in the morning uh, uh, the Reverend Stuart McLeary left his bachelor flat in Broad Street and stepped out briskly towards Carfax so at 8 45 in the morning what happens respected Stuart McLeary he left his bachelor flat he left his bachelor flat and he stepped out briskly towards uh, Carfax and the weatherman reported temperatures considerably below the normal uh, below the normal for early June and a long black overcoat and a shallow crowned clerical hat provided welcome protection from the steady drizzle which had set in half an hour means here you can see in this paragraph McLeary's arrival has been described okay how McLeary has come what kind of things he has uh, you know carried with him like in his right hand he was carrying a small brown suitcase which contained all that he would need for his morning duties uh, say sealed question paper is also uh, envelope is also there in which there is an invitation form special authentication card from the exam board a paper knife a bible okay all these things are there the two hour examination was scheduled to start at 9 15 am evans was lathering his face vigorously when Stevens brought in two small square tables and set them opposite each other in the narrow space between the bunk on the one side and on the other a distempered stone wall. Next, Stevens brought in two hard chairs, the slightly less battered of which he placed in front of the table which stood nearer the cell door. Jackson put in a brief final appearance, behave yourself laddy. Okay? Jackson says, behave yourself, laddy, means a spoken word for boy, behave yourself, even turns and turned and nodded, uh, and these, Jackson pointed to the pinups off, pinups means the poster, posters you can say, okay, posters of some, um, posters of anybody, okay, and Jackson's pointed uh, to the, pointing to the pinups said, you just remove these pinups. Okay. Evans turned and nodded again. I was going to take them anyway. A minister, isn't he? A minister is coming to invigilate me, isn't he? That is what Evans is asking to Jackson. The chap coming to sit in, I mean. And how did you know that? Jackson asked quietly. Well, I had to sign some forms, didn't I? And I could not help. So while signing some forms, I could see my invigilators. Uh, who, who the invigilator is going to be. Evans uh, drew the razor carefully down his left cheek and left a neat swath in white uh, ladder. Can I ask you something, Mr. Jackson? Why did they have to bug me in this cell? Okay, so Evans has some query. Evans has some query. Uh, Evans has uh, some query, okay, which uh, he's trying to Hmm. Evans has some query. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so what is the query all about? Uh, Evans says that. Uh, Evans asks uh, Jackson, why did they have to bug me in this cell? It means, uh, why did they have, why did they keep one, uh, this microphone here in this cell? Bug means microphone, okay? Microphone in the cell. Okay, so why did they keep this microphone in the cell? He nodded his head vaguely to a point above the door. Not a very neat job, okay, uh, considered Jackson. Jackson said that it is not a very, uh, not a very uh, you know, um, clever way of keeping the microphone in front of uh, Evans so because, uh, because uh, it should be kept somewhere 
uh, away from Evans, okay? Uh, so that Evans is not aware of the presence of microphone in his cell, okay? Uh, so mm, th that is what Jackson says, not a very neat job. They are not, they don't honestly think I'm going to try to, okay? Uh, you know, then Evans become a bit disappointed saying uh, mm, to Jackson that, you know, they think that I'm not going to uh, do, uh, I'm going to write the exam fairly. They think that I'm going to do something wrong, but it's not so. This is what Evans says. They are taking no chances, Evans. Nobody in his senses would take any chance with you. So uh, Jackson says, nobody on earth would take any chance with you because you are a convict. Uh, who is going to listen in? I will tell you who is going to listen in, lady. It's the governor himself. He's the governor himself who will listen to whether you talk during the examination. That is why microphone has been kept so as to capture your voice and communicate the message to the uh, to the governor who is going to keep a track on you. He do doesn't trust you a bloody inch and nor do I. I will be watching you like a hawk even so. Keep your nose and clean clear. He walked towards the door. Evans nodded. He's already thought of that. And number two, handkerchief was lying ready on the bunk and neatly folded square of off-white linen. Just one more thing, Einstein. Okay. He is, uh, Jackson is referring Evans as Einstein. He says, uh, what is, what, mm, yeah, what that? Uh, good luck, old son. Uh, in the little lodge just inside the prison's main gates, the Reverend St. Macleary signed his name neatly in the visitor's book and then walked side by side with a silent prison officer across the exercise yard to D-Wing where he was greeted by Jackson. Okay, where he was greeted by Jackson. Okay, so the wing's heavy outer door was unlocked and locked behind them. The heavy inner door, the same, and McLeary was handed into Stephen's keeping. McLeary was handed into when uh, he came, Jackson came, okay, through the D-wing, uh, uh, he came. And so he was greeted by Jackson, and then, then the security of the uh, entire arrangement is, is spoken about here. You can see it's a tight security. And then you can see here McLeary was handed into Stephen's keeping, okay. So the in uh, McLeary was like Stephen was uh, appointed as in charge, okay. Uh, he will look after McLeary and then he says, Ivan says, get the razor, sorry, Jackson says, get the razor. Stevens nodded, well, keep your eyes skinned clear. Uh, keep your eyes clean. Be, be very careful. It's a phrase, uh, idiom, which means uh, be very careful. Clear. Stevens nodded again. And McLeary, his feet clanging up the iron stairs, followed his new guide and finally stood before a cell door where Stevens opened the peephole and looked through. Okay, he opened the peephole and looked through. That's him, sir. That's him, sir. Evans, Evans facing the door, sat quietly at the further of the two tables. His whole attention riveted to a textbook of elementary grammar, German grammar. Stevens took the key from his ring and the cell lock sprang back with a thudded metallic twang. Okay, now uh, Stevens will leave McLeary, uh, you know, in the care of... Uh, what is that called? Uh, Stevens, uh, sorry, uh, Evans, and now McLeary will be invigilating Evans. It was 9 10 a.m. when the governor switched on the receiver. He had instructed Jackson to tell Evans of the temporary little precaution that was only fair, as if Evans wouldn't spot it. But wasn't it all a bit theoretical, schoolboyish almost? Okay, this is what. Uh, uh, Jackson thinks he had instructed Jackson, Jackson, the governor, instructed Jackson to tell Evans of the temporary little precaution that was only fair. Uh, all the precautions have also been uh, intimated to Evans that was only fair. But uh, Jackson thinks that it is not required, it's all melodramatic or very much theor 
theatrical means it's too much exaggerated it's something like schoolboyish how on earth was he once going to try anything on on today if he was so anxious to make another break why in the heaven's name hadn't he tried it from the recreational block from the recreational block itself he even could have run away understood but he did not run away so jackson thinks that he is not going to run away today uh, much easier but he hadn't okay it was very much easy for him to run away from recreational block he did not okay so now also there is no there is no chance and there he was now sitting in a locked cell all the prison officers on the alert two more locked doors between his cell and the yard and a yard uh, with a wall as high as high stick yes even was as safe as houses even was as safe as houses anyway it wasn't be it wouldn't be any trouble at all to have the receiver turned on for the next couple of hours or so it wasn't as if there was going to be anything to listen to was it amongst other things an invigilator's duty was to ensure that the strict, strictest silence was observed but still that little nagging about doubt might even try to take advantage of macleary get him to smuggle in a chisel or two or a roof ladder or something of this sort now jackson has a doubt in his mind whether evans is going to uh, whether evans is going to trick uh, the invigilator uh, because invigilator was uh, uh, invigilator is a clergyman so evans might uh, take advantage of this clergyman so there is some doubt uh, element of doubt residual doubt left in the mind of the mm, you know mind of the uh, jackson mind of jackson the governor set up uh, sharply it was all very well getting rid of any potential weapon that evans could have used but what about macleary what if quite unwittingly the innocent macleary had brought in something himself okay now there some things what about macleary macleary uh, we need to frisk or check because if innocently macleary also carries something in his in his suitcase and uh, which uh, evans can uh, grab or can seize in that case also uh, evans can run away so it's better to frisk macleary as well okay and uh you know if any suspicious thing or any paper knife or something is found then we can take it away because with the help of which evans can threaten him and run away from the prison that is why now they will frisk macleary as well okay frisk a jack knife perhaps you know what if evans held him hostage with such a weapon so jackson thinks that uh, we have frisked uh, evans we have checked the rooms of uh, room of evans but what about uh, uh, macleary's uh, you know like uh, suitcase we need to frisk it check it the governor reached for the phone it was 9:12 am the examinee and the invigilator had already been uh, introduced by stevens when jackson came back and shouted to macleary through the cell door can you come outside in outside a minute sir you too stevens can you come outside a minute sir you too stevens jackson quickly explained the governor's worries and macleary patiently held out his arms at shoulder level while jackson lightly frisked his clothes something hard here sir ma reading glasses replied macleary ma reading glasses replied macleary looking down at the spectacled case Jackson quickly reassured him and bending down on the landing thumb flipped the catches on the suitcase Jackson could immediately see the suitcase and he has planned to uh, frisk it he picked up each uh, envelope in turn carefully passed his palms along their surfaces and seemed satisfied he riffled curious uh, cursorily through a few pages of holy writ this is the book which uh, macleary carried with him and vaguely shook the church times that is the newspaper which the you know, which macleary has brought in a suitcase so he was shaking it so that if anything is inside it will come out all right so far but one of the objects in macleary suitcase was puzzling him sorely okay one of the objects was suspicious what is that then he is asking macleary do you mind telling me why you have brought this sir 
he held up a smallish semi inflated rubber ring okay so mcclary has brought a small semi inflated rubber ring such as a young child with a waist of about 12 inches might have struggled into you thinking of going for a swim sir have you brought it for swimming purpose sir uh, mcclary's hither the amiable demeanor was slightly ruffled by this tasteless tasteless little peasantry okay so this is something interesting dear students you can see mcclary's hither the amiable demeanor okay amiable demeanor means he is pleasant appearance suddenly changed into a tasteless appearance okay and he answered jackson somewhat surly if you must know i suffer from hemorrhoids i suffer from hemorrhoids and when i am sitting down for any length of time okay um, when i am sitting down for any length of time so uh, there is a problem with me very sorry sir i did not mean to ever hurt you something like that the embarrassment was still reddening jackson's cheeks when he found the paper knife at the bottom of the case and at the bottom of the case there is a paper knife also i think i would better keep this though if you don't mind that is sir it was 9:18 am before the governor heard their voices again and it was clear that the examination was going to be more than a little late in getting underway mcclary you've got a watch even says yes sir mcclary i'll be telling you when to start and again when you have 5 minutes left all right silence mcclary there's plenty more of this writing paper should you need it silence if you require there is plenty of writing paper don't worry about this mcclary says write the name of the paper 0211 in the top left hand corner in the top right hand corner write your index number 313 and in the in the box just below that write your center number 2711 all right silence 920 mcclary i am going to evans is not going to stay here he is not going to stay here is he i don't know about that i uh, mr jack jackson has given me strict instructions to to means to take care of you how am i supposed to concentrate on my exam with something breathing down my neck christ sorry sir i didn't mean the governor rest for the phone jackson ah good get stevens out of that cell will you i think we are perhaps overdoing things now the governor could hear the conversation uh, between mcclary and stevens uh, evans so he heard it through the microphone which is kept there inside the cell so the governor is calling stevens out of the cell he is saying ki you come out uh, otherwise uh, you know evans cannot write his paper as you wish sir then stevens came out the governor heard the exchanges in the cell heard the door clang once more and heard mcclary in announce that examination had begun at last it was 9:25 am and there was a great calm at 9:40 am the examination board rang through and the assistant secretary with special responsibility for modern languages asked to speak to the governor the examination had already started no doubt a quarter of an hour ago yes well there was a correction slip which some fool had forgotten to place in the examination package very brief could the governor please announce this yes of course i'll put you straight through to mr jackson in d wing hold the line a minute okay so governor got a call actually hmm. uh, from examination board okay ki there is a correction slip uh, you know the, there is something wrong in the question paper so there is a correction slip uh, which uh, was uh, forgotten by people some people okay to place in the examination package so can the government governor help to uh, you know pass it on to evans yes of course i will put it straight through to mr jackson governor said put the line a minute was this the sort of thing the governor had feared was the phone call a fake some signal some secret message this is what governor might have might be thinking but he could check on that immediately 
he dialed the number of the examination board but heard only the uh, staccato bleefs of a line engaged okay so the governor wanted to cross check by uh, making a call to the by dialing to the examination board but examination board number appeared to be busy line appeared to be engaged therefore he could not verify the fact that the phone call that he received was really from exam department or it's a fake call he could not verify that because the examination board number was showing engaged so it was very difficult for him to verify but without verification he has passed on the correction slip to evans okay but then the line was engaged wasn't it yes not very intelligent that two minutes later he heard some whispered communications in the cell uh, and then mcclary's broad scots voice mcclary's broad scott scots voice so what was the that was what was that will you please stop writing a wee while mr evans and listen carefully candidates offering german 0 to 1 1 should note the following correction so what did he hear what did governor hear governor hear uh, uh, this uh, will he this sentence will you please stop writing a wee while mr evans and listen carefully candidates offering german should note the following correction on page 3 line 15 the fourth word should read golden not goldeny and the whole phrase will therefore read zoom golden in loen not zoom golden loen i will repeat that okay so this is uh, this is what is the uh, you know correction slip all about okay the correction slip was has made something correct uh, this is german uh, german language so you will not be able to understand dear student okay i will repeat that the governor listened and smiled he had taken german in the sixth form himself and he remembered all about the agreements of adjectives and so did mcclary by the sound of things for the minister's pronunciation was most impressive but what about evans he probably did not know what an adjective was the phone rang again in the magistrate's court they needed a prison van and a couple of prison officers remand case and within 2 minutes the governor was wondering whether that could be a hoax he told himself not to be so silly his imagination was beginning to run riot he once for the first quarter of an hour stevens had dutifully peered through the peephole at intervals of 1 minute or so and after that every 2 minutes at 10:45 am everything was still all right as he looked through the peep hole once more it took 4 or 5 seconds no more what was the point it was always more or less the same even his pen between his lips sat staring straight in front of him towards the door seeking it seemed some soul solely needed inspiration from somewhere even was not writing he kept his uh, pen okay between his lips okay and he was not writing anything he was looking somewhere towards the door so this is this is what steven spoon could uh, observe from from outside through the peep hole and opposite him mcclary seated slightly askew from the table his face in semi profile his hair as steven had noticed earlier immaturely clipped pretty closely to the skull his wide his eyes behind the pebbles lens spearing shots slightly at charts times he was reading uh, he was glancing at charts times his right index finger hooked beneath the narrow clerical collar and the fingers of the left hand the nails meticulously manicured slowly stroking the short black beard okay so um, uh, mcclary was uh, sitting somewhere okay and uh, he was giving uh, then he was inhalating but in a very casual manner that is what is meant by the by the description okay he was inhalating even but in a very casual manner at 10:50 am the receiver crackled to life and the governor realized he had almost forgotten evans for a few minutes and then evans please sir uh, evans please sir evans would you mind if i put a blanket around me hmm. um okay so now he is asking for a permission from mcclary okay um, 
okay uh, uh, for that uh, to allow him to put a blanket around him okay uh, uh, he will say he might be feeling cold or something he uh, has asked for a blanket around him let's see whether mcleary approves him or hmm, gives him the permission to carry the uh, blanket with him uh, we shall uh, find it out shortly okay uh, in our next class dear students okay so aman rudraksh Sanubar, are you there? Are you still there with me? Our dear students, uh, 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 next class I shall try to, like I need another two classes minimum to finish this lesson. Uh, you have to read this lesson a bit slow because uh, it's a bit tricky lesson. Now the tricky part is yet to start. So the tricky part at least you need to uh, read a little bit uh, uh, slowly okay uh, so that you understand this uh, and this is for information is the last lesson so after that we'll start with revision classes uh, so um, you read at home as well um, but uh, the next part uh, next classes so, and another uh, class I need I need two classes to wind up this lesson okay so we shall go a bit slow next class onwards because there is something tricky okay the tricky part is coming up now and we need to be very careful to be able to understand the tricky part actually okay so it's uh, the writer is very intelligent and he writes all the crime crime novels and crime short stories uh, so the uh, tricky part will uh, start very shortly now and you shall be able to discover whether McLeary was the real McLeary or he was uh, one of um, you know Evans's accomplices and uh, if the governor was real uh, the governor's concern was real and whether the phone call of correction slip that he got from the um, assumed uh, as the examination department is uh, is is true or it's 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 false okay so all that things will discover in our next classes okay so dear students thank you so much for being with me all throughout thank you and uh, even though the number is very very slim and very very alarming you can say uh, but still thank you so much um, for being there we shall continue our lecture in the next class okay next day 120 uh, that is day uh, day after tomorrow dear students okay at 120 sharp i shall come online so you please be with me Bye-bye, take care and have a nice day.